Here's our project titled Golden Plums. Loved painting it. Let's get started. Okay, to get the background ready for this project, I applied one coat of multi-purpose sealer with a two inch foam roller and then I applied two coats of wisteria with the same roller. Now we're going to work and then I lightly sanded it and you can lightly sand it uh, with a brown paper bag and get the same results. I am going to take a um, damp artist sponge, bring all the water out of it. We want it damp, we don't want it sopping wet because it will thin down our paint and make it more difficult. I'm going to pick up some um, lavender on the edge of my brush, or sponge, and I'm going to start working this in, just along the edges, all the way around. I want to retain a light color in the very center of this, but I want to bring this in a little bit because I'm going to add an even darker color on the edge. So I'm using the um, dampened edge of the sponge, kind of keep that lighter there in the center. So we can use that to remove if we need. Just a little lightness in there. starting to lift the paint so I'm going to leave this and let it dry a little bit. A little bit too dark right there. I don't really like that. I'm going to let it dry and then we're going to come back with the darker color on the outer edge. Okay, I've got um, Dachshund Purple and Blue Violet on my palette here and I'm not really sure which one I want. So I think I'll pick up a little bit of both right there together on my sponge and we want to keep this on the outermost edge out here and definitely gently blend that. I'm going to need some water. My sponge is getting a little bit dry so I'm just going to take my misting bottle and mist that so I can smooth it out farther than what I want. Oh, it's very wet. I'm going to go to the opposite side of my sponge and just very gently start blending that. If at any time you feel like you've just got it way too dark, I'm going to wipe some of the paint off of my sponge onto a paper towel. You can come back with your base color, which was the Wisteria, and just kind of so I'm kind of just removing a little bit of this and tapping it off on a paper towel over here. I am using the gentlest of pressure here because I want to remove a little bit and if I rub too hard I'm going to just remove it all. And it's just a gentle blending here to make this really pretty background. Okay, I think that looks really, really pretty on there. So we're going to let that dry and then we are going to transfer our pattern on here. I think that background looks great. Um, whatever shade that your purple comes out to be is going to be just fine. 
but um, play around with it. And like I said, if you get it where you don't like it, just go back with the base coat. You can always start all over and try it again. You can do it with a brush if you're having a little difficulty with the sponge. You can just get a, a large filbert brush and slip slap the background, keeping it light in the center, and then gently blend as you get um, out farther, you'll get darker and darker. Okay. All right, we have got our background done, and I think if I ever paint this again, I'm going to make my lighter color come out just a little bit more, because I think once we get everything painted in there, we won't see as much of the light in the center as I would like to see. But uh, we're going to go with it here. So we're just going to—I'm just going to rough in some um, base coats in here, real quick, and then come back and. Um, add a second coat on here. So uh, I'm starting with some cocoa here on um, my uh, branch. And this one comes out over here past this plum. And I probably need a bigger brush here. So you don't have to follow my line perfectly just kind of go with some kind of branch shape irregular we don't want it to be perfect and then it kind of has a little hump or twist or whatever right there going to start getting a little bit more narrow as we come down here so let's see it goes down this way I don't want it to be quite this narrow I'm just kind of getting a path of where it's going and some irregularities I'm just going to take it through that through that um, leaf right there and we can have some stuff kind of coming off of it and then we've got a little branch coming off here going this way and then another little one coming off of that definitely these smaller areas you probably want to get a a much smaller round brush than what I have here. This one goes behind these leaves and comes out over here. And we can have some little things coming off of it. We can add all that stuff later. Uh, then this stem comes over here or branch. We'll need two coats because laying it on top of this purple, it looks a little green. Or a little, yeah, a little green to me. So <clears throat> we will definitely apply a second coat. I'm just showing you the first coat so that you can work on the first coats. Um, our plums here. We're going to do golden plums on here since our background is purple. I was originally going to do a bluish colored plum. So if you prefer a blue color plum, then go for that. But I'm going to make these golden plums on here. Something you don't see a whole lot of. So we're going to base coat them in with a couple of coats of moon yellow. Nice smooth coats. Add a little bit of water to your paint. Start out here in the middle to like offload your brush and then you can go out and get catch the edges. Go up to your lines. Okay, so they'll all three be painted in with the um, moon yellow two coats on everything and we will come back and add more to our branch but for now 
we're going to keep it that way. Our leaves, I'm going to fatten my branch up here just a little bit back here. You can have it go all the way off if you want, but I didn't didn't want that look. Um, our leaves, we're going to base coat them in. My paint looks a little thin here. I'm using Hauser Medium Green. So just put in the few detail lines that you need to get everything base coated in here. I'm not going to paint that one in until I paint this in. I'll go ahead and paint this one in. This is a folded. Um, this whole edge of this leaf is turned up, so I, I uh, transferred the line on there so you could kind of see it, but I'm just going to paint right over it, and we'll come back and add that a little bit later. Okay, so all the leaves are going to be base coated in with that. Everything gets two coats. I'm not going to worry about our stems coming into our plums yet. We'll add those later. So let's get our two coats on, and then we're going to come back and start adding some beautiful detail to this. Okay, we're going to start working on our branch here. So we want to create some choppy strokes on our branch to give it the look of some wood texture on there. So we are going to, we have on our palette uh, Snow White Cocoa, which is our base color, uh, Burnt Umber, and um, Soft Black. So I'm going to load up with my base color, which is Cocoa, and then get some Burnt Umber on there as well. And I just want to start creating some, some choppy strokes in here. I'm, I'm just using a filbert brush. It's just a randomness here. I'm using the chisel edge of a filbert brush. And this is just going to help create some texture here. Add another brown in here to give it a little bit more variety of color. We're going to be creating a little end on the trunk there. So right now I'm just using burnt umber and a little bit of cocoa. I think I'll put some raw sienna out as well. Or maybe burnt sienna. I'm not sure which one of those two I want to use. I might use the burnt sienna. It's got a little more red in it. So just all along our main trunk here. I could go down to a smaller filbert. I feel like I've got one that's way too big here. Just choppy. I just want to be choppy with my strokes. Okay, I'm going to get a smaller filbert. What I have here is a six. So I'm going to see if I can grab a four. four here. Alright, I'm going to put some of that burnt sienna. Oh, uh, yeah, burnt sienna. In here. Just a little bit. Too much water in my brush, so let me get that out and reload here. Texture, 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 that's what we're creating here. Okay, so 
So that's our first, that's just the beginning. Okay, I want to uh, add some strokes of some soft black along our dark side, which will be the lower and the left side. Just choppiness. And put a little bit here. And then I'm going to mix a little bit of um, cocoa and white. So just brush mix them a lighter brown than what the cocoa is. And let me flatten my brush here. We'll add a few of these up here. Choppy stuff here. Choppy, choppy, choppy. Okay, that's kind of starting to look like some tree bark there. I want to add a little bit of gray in here, so I'm going to take the soft black, which is more of a brown than a black. It tends to be more towards the brown side. And I'm going to mix some white with it just to get kind of a gray color. And I want to put this in here just a little bit. I'll probably keep it more towards the middle. Okay, we got some good stuff going on with this branch now. Okay, before we start floating uh, the shading at the bottom, let's add some more branches on here. So, um, I'm going to just mix a little bit of burnt umber with some of the cocoa. I want to make some a little more detail branches maybe. Now, the, the limbs for a plum tree have these little ones that come off of it and they're kind of kind of dark at the end of them like this and they're kind of fatter back here and they just come into that so but you know you can just make some some strokes on here Just kind of make everything look a little bit more like it has some movement. Don't make it like these here to me, they just stop. So I'm going to kind of wiggle and thin the ends out a little bit. And maybe pull some more coming off of it. so many right there. That's just a little bit too much. Let's take that down. I don't want so many branches. I think I just wanted to find the ones that I have on here a little bit better. And then just kind of wiggle the ends of them. This one definitely stops too suddenly. And this one does too. I think I'll put a little stem kind of coming off here. pretty good. We don't need a whole lot of stuff going on here. Do need to lighten this one a little bit. I 
This one's a little fatter than what I like. So I think I'll have a little piece of one coming off of it. Okay, I think that looks good enough for our branch. I might come back a little bit later and add some more on there. For now, we want to shade. I'm going to shade with some... I think I'll do a mix of burnt umber and soft black. I've got too much water in my brush here. And then I'll come back and repeat with just soft black. We want to create a little bit of a an end over here. Okay. Then we're going to go along the bottom of our branch. And we can make this choppy. And that branch is going to come off of this one. Let's chop, make it choppy. Just a little bit of each color. Okay, now this one, you can do it two ways. You can highlight from here to here to make it seem like it's coming from the top. Or you can shade underneath here to make it seem like it's more coming from the bottom side of the um, main branch. Stay on that choppy side. It's a, it's a little bit of, of each color, the burnt umber and the soft black. And just be kind of choppy, choppy, choppy. Choppy, choppy, choppy. So this one up here, I want it to be more on coming from the top side of this, so I'm just going to keep my shading on this edge here. We'll come back and do next to our um, leaves here in a minute. And then this one, I think I might do it the same, have it coming off the top. I could change my mind when I come back to... Do a little bit of shading there. Okay, I'm going to come back with some soft black down here. Darken that up a little bit. Okay, now that was our mix of... Oh, I didn't get down here. That was our mix of burnt umber and soft black. Just kind of choppy. Okay. So I'm going to wash my brush. I think I'll... Well, no, I'll stay with this bigger brush. This is a, a 10 flat brush. It's, it's a good enough size for me here. Okay, let's repeat that with just soft black. I think I might mix some, a, just a tiny little bit of burnt sienna in there and see how I like that. Might make it just a little bit too dark. Go with a little bit more burnt sienna and not very much black. I feel like the bottom of my branch is getting weighed down here. So let's just stick with the burnt sienna on top of this, this mix here. Just a little pity pity pat up on the tippy toe of my brush, just kind of dabbing and putting some on there. Okay, now uh, we're going to start adding some highlight on here. So let's do a mix of cocoa and white. 
We'll just do an equal mix here. I'll see if that's too light. If it's too light, then we'll come back and a little bit more cocoa in there. Got a little water in my brush. I am going to add a little bit more cocoa back in there. And again, this is just kind of a doing it roughly. I want to cover up all of our little choppy stuff that we did. be so bright right there because that leaf's laying on top of that. And a little bit of brightness here, not too much. A little bit here. Choppy choppy. Pity patty. Chop chop chop. And let's put some on the end over here. I do not know why my dog just came in here and she's just like carrying on. I think she knows it's getting close to dinner time and she always gets a special treat at dinner time. So she's probably like, where's my treat? Where is my treat? What is going on? I need my treat. All right, I'm going to go to a smaller brush here so I can float my soft black. I'm going to put some... where it really tucks that branch underneath and right here this is just straight soft black I really want to tuck those branches underneath let's go next to our pears or plums I'm going to be calling them pears since I painted them yellow you just wait and see how many times I call these pears but they are golden plums. Need some water in my brush. It's starting to separate just a touch. All right, just look for all the places where you've got your stem going behind something and shade those places with some soft black. stem might have a little bit of shading going on there. Anywhere you can see some extra stem that need that looks like it needs to be have a little bit of shading on it. Let's add that. Okay, next to this leaf right here. A little bit more water. Work it into your brush just like you work the paint in. Have to come back and touch that leaf up there. And then this leaf kind of lays overneath, oh, over, overneath, over the branch here. So we'll put a little bit of shading there. Maybe not quite so dark. brush more flat so I can have a smooth shading there instead of such a dark shading which I still feel it's very dark some of my choppiness in there so I'm going to add a few choppy strokes back in there. I think I'm going to 
And some burnt sienna or some gray ones in there. Some burnt sienna on the end over here. Choppy, choppy, choppy. Ooh, that's a big chop. That was a big chop, man. Just some little chops. Okay, then you want to erase any graphite lines that you don't need. The gray's kind of faded back down in there a little bit on our branch. Just a few strokes, quick little strokes. If you, if you lose them, like I lost them. I think that helps a lot. Our limb looks pretty good, I think. I think. We will move on to the plums. Okay, I brightened it up back here just by a one-to-one -one mix of cocoa and um, white. Just felt like it needed a little bit more brightness there. And so I'm gonna just place this on here. Couple places just needs just needs to be a little bit brighter. Some more water on my brush. Look that in. higher, brighter highlights here. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Still keeping it choppy because I want my I them to stay choppy. Choppy, choppy, choppy. A little bit here. off our leaf there. Don't want it to go quite that far down. So I'll take that brush and take that off. Okay, that's good enough there. This is just tweaking. Tweaky, tweaky, tweaky. We're just going back with some of our, this is soft black here. Okay, that looks pretty good. 
Okay, let's work on our plums now. We're going to add some colors in here. I think the first color I want to add is going to be some antique gold on here. I'm going to make these um, more yellow golden, but I want to add some touches of some orange on here. So I'm going to start by going down each side of our line here that we created in the middle. I'm going to try and stay off of that line and then come back and re repaint there because um, I did it in pencil for you to see but I don't want the pencil mark to stay in there so I'm going to stay off of it as I paint this stroke and before I paint the next one when it dries I will erase it This is antique gold. Just getting a start there. Okay. I just want to make sure it's dry because I don't want to erase the paint that I just put on there. Brush away from your paint so that you don't get your pencil sha or your eraser shavings in your paint. Okay, so up here at the um, top, I want to create a little place for a stem. So I'm just going to do a little sort of a C stroke in there with the toe of the brush. I'm going to do that on all of them. To the line that I just painted. You're going to shape follow. There's a lot of paint right there. Because yeah, you want this to look rounded. So I'll do this one. some more water and paint in my brush. Work it in and blend it really well. Okay, that looks pretty good. So this is going to be our more shaded side, so I'm going to some of this along the back side here. We'll go around this one. And we'll go around this one. Yummy already. I still got several steps to go, but they're looking good. Okay, I got that one shaped funny, so let me reshape it. That looks better. That was kind of weird shaped plum there. Yay, I called it a plum and I didn't call it a yeah. Pear. I might put a little bit of this gold up in here. I think about adding it up here. Just kind of a random. Add some of that, bring some of that up in there. a little bit better than that white. 
white and cocoa mix so we can do our highlight with the gold I think the antique gold will bring out the color a little bit better so we'll just do that okay let me get this dry okay let's add a little bit of sunny day on here side with our sunny day. I'm going to go underneath that leaf there. I'm going to put some over here in the center. Just pat it in and then just kind of blend it out by using the water edge of the brush. Right there in that spot. I think I'll put some over here. And some over on this side. Not too much. It's more the shadow side. looking good okay let's shade again here this time I'm gonna put just a little bit of uh, burnt sienna in my mix I'm gonna go everywhere that I went with the antique gold so it's antique gold mostly with just a touch of burnt sienna Side my lines here, so I'm going to clean that up. Keep a damp brush handy. Okay, where was I? Anti gold with just a little tiny bit of burnt sienna. I'm going to go ahead and go along this edge and around this plum. I'm going to get my mop brush here. Kind of soften that a little bit. Remove a little bit of that paint. We use a mop brush dry. You clean it off on a damp spot on your paper towel and then you dry it off. You do it after every time that you use it because if you don't you'll just transfer paint all over your project. to go down the centers so I'm going to go to this side and shape follow here go on this side Soft pressure, lay your brush flat, and just be gentle. I'm not going to worry if I get any on that leaf. I will come back and touch it up before I add any details to it. Okay, I'm going to go to the other side. I'll make my little C stroke. My my brush might actually be a little bit too big for a C-stroke, but let's see what I can do. Because I definitely want it to be darker in here. I'm trying to get some... My burnt sienna is drying up already, and I was trying to get some out to mix with my antique gold. It. I don't want them to look like like peaches. <laughs> kind of starting to look like peaches, I think. I'm gonna mop that. So 
So if they get to looking like peaches, I might have to just change the whole name of my design to peaches. <laughs> I really didn't think about painting peaches. I hadn't planned on painting them, so. But they are kind of starting to look like peaches. Uh, hopefully I can bring them out of that and keep them looking like plums. Alright. Clean my brush off here. I need to darken right along this edge here, so... And take that mix. Get a little bit closer to the edge here. I want to see that light. Okay. I'm going to repeat my sunny day here. And then, of course, we'll put a little bit in the centers here. And just take the water edge and kind of soften it out. Same up here. Just lay some, tap some in there, and then take the water edge. Try not to get out into our shading over here. Just kind of blend it out, mop brush if you need it, and tap it out. It just kind of smooths it all out there. Okay, okay, let's add a few tints of cad orange on here. just um, took the water in my brush and kind of tinted it with some of the orange. I'm going to keep this more down here. It's not showing up very well. Let's get a little bit of cad red. I really don't want these to turn into peaches, but the, um, the plums, when I looked at the pictures for the plums, They have almost the same coloring that peaches have, so they're just a little shinier where peaches are more fuzzy. I'm going to lay my brush down a little bit flatter so I can lay some of that paint on there. And mop it just a little bit. some of this up here. Think. 
Let me fix that shape there. I'm going to add some of this color over here on this one where I put the orange and I didn't like the orange as well. It just didn't show up enough. Okay, I've got a hard line up here. So I'm going to dampen that since it was just a kind of a wash of color. It didn't didn't take away from anything. Okay, over here, we've got a little light spot that kind of bugs me. pretty good. I'm going to touch up this edge over here with the sunny day. I really messed that up. pretty good for our first our first one on there. I'm gonna brighten that red. That cadmium red. So pretty much every place that we put it we're gonna repeat. Yeah, put a little bit down here. Those are looking pretty good, I think. Okay, let's take some of our cad yellow here. It's a um, pretty transparent color. So we're just going to kind of put it anywhere you want to on here because it won't, it won't take away from anything. yellow that they are. Come back 
for some sunny day here, I think. I need to go around that, that leaf there and shade around that. That's what's an antique gold. I'll have to let that dry. It's pretty wet. So I'm going to get... Maybe. I'm going to get some paint out here. I'm going to take some burnt umber and a little bit of the burnt sienna mixed together. I want to darken this down in here. Got a smaller brush, a little C stroke. And that's where our stem is going to go. Okay, let's lighten up a little bit on our light side with some white and sunny day mix. Too much water in my brush here, so. So I'm just going to dip one time into each one. And then we're going to get lighter over here. Squirt some new sunny day out. This is not mixed well. It's coming off kind of transparent, and I don't want that. Whoop. Got my shape caddy want this there. Wipe that baby right off of there. A little bit out here. Well, oh, goodness gracious. I stepped away from this painting for a little bit and <laughs> now I've come back to it and I'm it's like I forgot how to paint. This right here. Just kind of tap some in there. Not too much. Remember to use the water edge of the brush, soften it out and smooth it out. Okay. Let's create a little bit brighter highlight on there. And we'll do just white this time. keep this highlight more here so like when I put it in those other places where I just laid the paint down and took the water edge and just kind of softened it back take my mop brush and gently mop that the same thing here now this is more of a bullseye float because I'm keeping the paint always to the center and the water edge always to the outside of the circle that I'm making there. And I'm going to put a little one here. the outer edge here. I'm 
just the very edge. And this is straight snow white. Okay, a little bit over here. I think it needs it over here. here. Not too much there. That one, that area is probably more in the shadow than any of the other areas. So let's get some white up here. I'm going to put a little bit here around our Definitely need more water on my brush here. I didn't want it quite that wide, so I took the water edge and narrowed it down just a little bit. like I still need to do some a little bit more especially on these two this one looks okay with the center so I'm going to take a little bit more of the antique gold maybe I'm just kind of tweaking it and touching it up. And I definitely want some more cad yellow on here. And remember, cad yellow is a little more transparent. So it won't it won't hide anything on here. I'll stay out of my white. And just kind of go around. Just gently mop it. Just keep it out of the white areas. you put on there. Alright, I'm going to have to go down the centers of these two with that mix, which was um, burnt sienna and antique gold. Just a tiny little bit of burnt sienna. I'm going to go on this side. Gently mopping that. 
I feel like this one needs to come down. All right, let me go do the other one. Up each side and around your in place. I just definitely want to see that. That little valley thing in there, we want it to look pretty good there. Okay, I just want to put the white on here one more time. Just in case when I put the cat yellow on there it got a little washed out. I want to keep that bright, bright, bright. a hard line there so I'm just going to dampen it. I'm just looking for all the high spots here so I can put some some white in there. Just tweak it up a little bit. Okay. I think that uh, might finish up our plums. I'm thinking that my branch, though, I think it needs to be darker on the bottom edge here. Just a wash of soft black. I 
like it lost its weight there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's make our stems now. Let's use some Hauser medium green here. And we're going to connect them. A lot more substantial than that. We're going to come in and add some browns to these stems. some burnt umber and pull that into our stem from both directions. it off and we get a little bit more green fill in the middle a little bit better and I'll pick up a little bit of the antique gold here and I'll put a little bit of this on our stems a little bit of a highlight and I'm going to shade next to the stems on the tree with some soft black. And put a little bit of this soft black down here. Kind of set it down in the in the fruit a little bit. Got that on my highlight area, so I just wiped it off. Okay, so my shading where one lays over the other definitely needs to be darker, so I don't know, burnt umber might be a little bit too dark. Let's see. Go underneath this leaf. Definitely want to darken that up. Just want to touch darker over here. Maybe not quite that dark. Mm -hmm. 
This is just some burnt umber, soft black, whatever you've got on your palette. But I have the tiniest little bit on my brush because I don't want it to overtake here. I still feel like my, my limb is missing something here. This is a little bit of white and antique gold together. Because we put the antique gold on here a little bit ago. So just put a little bit of white in with it. Just kind of a hit and miss kind of dot 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 thing. Put a little bit on there. Okay, I'm going to leave the branch alone because I still feel like it needs something else. Just not sure what. Um, I'll put some of this red on there. I don't think that's going to help, but. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's go move on to our leaves here. Okay, for our leaves, we are going to shade with um, Hauser Dark Green. So, this leaf right here is turned. So, I'm going to put Hauser Dark Green back here. This one is turned, flipped up this way. So we're going to put Hauser Dark Green next to where it's turned. And I'll put it on this underside here. Hauser Dark Green is kind of a thin paint. I want to put some back here at the base of this leaf. These two leaves will get it at the base. This one will get it at the base as well. Let's see, I didn't have enough paint for when I did that one, so I'll be coming back. This one is turned here. Let's see, this one is turned this way. And we'll put a little bit on the back edge of this one. of this one. Um, this one looks like I put a little turned edge on this one as well. You can you can leave the turned edges off, but I think it really adds to your painting. This one we'll do at the base. A hard line there. Mm -hmm. 
And then we've got this one that's kind of behind this water in my brush. Kind of goes behind this plum here. base here. Something on my brush there. And down in here. So this one. And I'll go up here and put a little bit more on this one. Okay, now we can create a center vein here. Use the water edge to kind of pull that out. This one has a vein. We'll see a little bit of it. I need to switch to a different brush. This one is not too well. I don't like that line right there, so I'm going to erase it. Curve flats are my favorite, but that one was just struggling. Okay, so I left off here a little bit there. This one has a, a vein down the center of it. Oops, I got the wrong color. This one. Right, I'm going to put a little bit on this edge down here. Get a center vein in this one. I thought for a second this one had a turned edge on it, and I'm like, man, did I make them all turned edged? But I did not. Center vein on this one. Okay. We are going to deepen our shading with a mix of Hazard Dark Green and Soft Black. It's going to make a really dark green. So let's go back in here. In all of our places, we won't do it as big as we did before, but we want to deepen. And I'm just going to go down the center of our veins here. Center. Kind of go next to this leaf here. Just deepening. That's all we're doing. Just 
just be doing less than you did previously. So right there, I would think that would be the, the deep area there. And then we'll go along the back, back here. I'm just brush mixing as I go here. No need to mix a ton of paint. We have to go along this back edge. Back there. Then we got this one here. And at the center of the center vein. Oh, I think I missed that one. Well, it doesn't look very dark, so some on it. Okay, we're going to highlight with some olive green. Okay, so on this one we're going to highlight next to the center vein. I know when you see that it's like, woo, baby, that's bright. That's some bright paint. And it is kind of bright, but it fades back down in there. This is olive green, and that's one reason why I really like to use it on my leaves, because it fades way back down in there. Okay, now this one is going to have some along this back edge. And then along this edge, this is the turned part. Okay, and this one we're going to go along this outer edge. Smooth it out. We'll get a little bit on this side of the tip. And a little bit next to our vein. So here we'll get it on top. Doing pretty good here. Getting close to being done. on the tip. That one faded way down in there, so definitely have to come back and redo that one. We'll come back and brighten on all of them, I think.
Okay, so that is our initial highlight there, and I'm going to come back and brighten, I think. Um, this one definitely needs more on it, but I think when I do it again, I'll add a little tiny bit of white in there. So let's go dip into white once, dip into olive green once, and just mix them on your brush. get a little bit lighter than what our initial highlight was. So, and then we'll just put this in some key places. a little bit more on my brush. It can go a long ways when you load your brush because we're not covering big areas here so too far over on my brush because it's making some wide little floats there that I don't like. Add some yellows on there. So I think I'll use cad yellow and get some out. Maybe a little antique gold. Maybe I'll combine the two antique gold and cad yellow. places. Add some stems in here. Let's get a liner brush and we're going to go into our Hauser medium green. I'm going to mix a little bit of Hauser dark green with it. Let's figure out where we want our stems to come from. So we know this one's going to come up from somewhere over here. 
and come into this one right here. Okay, this one's coming off of the palm there. This one is coming from around into there. This one can come from back here. And this one too. I'll add some brown to that. This one's going to come off of the palm here. There and then this one. I'll come from right there. Okay, so we've got all of them coming from somewhere. So let's go into either a soft black or a burnt umber. Mix that in with some of that green. And let's do our where it comes into the tree. Definitely want to keep these a little darker here. Get a little bit of that olive green. And add a little highlight on there. I have to thin some down here so I don't want to flow off my brush. Okay, I see a couple places I need to definitely darken. That's with just some soft black or that green and soft black mix that you Okay, let's add a little bit of a 
shadow under these stems. Should be using my flat here. This brush is not. It has the tip of it messed up. So I'm not getting good strokes there. It's looking pretty good. Pretty darn good here. Okay, uh, I went back and added a float, a mix of dioxane purple and soft black around the outside, and put just a little bit of dioxane purple in a couple of places on my leaves. And I think that's going to finish up this project called Golden Plums. I think it turned out beautifully. Okay, thanks for painting with me. I'll see you guys on the next one.